What up Wolfpack, it's your boy Amari, back again with another reaction video. Today we're getting into a video titled, Why BTS is Treated Unfairly in Korea. I know that this video is one day late, I'm very sorry about that. As many of you know, I was on a very urgent business trip and I got back in the middle of the night and I, I just wasn't able to film, I was exhausted. So. I'm filming now, the video will be up one day late. The Patreon video will still go up on Monday. I'll be doing my Patreon picks. The person who picked the video selected a Japanese BTS video called Lights. So I'll be reacting to that. That'll be up on Monday. So if you're interested in that, definitely make sure to go check that out. But I'm sorry for the delay on this particular video. As for this video, I know a little bit of the situation with BTS and society and the big three and all the stuff that was going on just from the other compilation videos that i've reacted to and by reading your guys's dms on twitter and discord and your comments on youtube and things like that but i'm very interested to get to know more about the situation and just have a deeper understanding of them as not just artists but as you know social figures in their home country so if you're interested in that make sure to stick around and watch the video with me and in the meantime definitely make sure to like comment subscribe and share and i'll see all you guys on the other side at the end of the year in december 2018 koreans were surprised to see the k-pop awards ceremony why is exo on the ending stage where's bts Major South Korean broadcasters, KBS, SBS, and NBC all set up EXO on the ending stage. Well, here's one thing. Performing at the last stage of the year-end awards ceremony in Korea is the most glorious thing for singers. This is because only the most beloved and widely influential singer throughout the year can take the ending stage. Including armies and even the people who are not fans of BTS thought of course BTS would be on the final stage. But why and how did EXO come out all of a sudden? Of course, everyone knows EXO is a group that made a great contribution to K-pop. But you would also know that BTS set a historic record last year. Korean internet community sites were about to blow up at that time. Fans insisted EXO was not on the stage often this year, even focused on unit albums targeting Japan market. People thought there should be a pressure from the agency SM Entertainment for taking the ending stage. So, EXO wasn't really active in 2018, but they still got the, you know, the hint, hint, nudge, nudge from the industry of like, you're the chosen group. And so they got the biggest honor in Korea, which is performing at the end of the year award ceremony. That sounds exactly like some record label type stuff. But I know that they were massively popular and came out around the same time that BTS debuted. And then something happened, like maybe some people got enlisted or something where they started to taper off some. I don't know if that was before or after this. I don't, I don't follow EXO. I have no idea really what has happened in their history or what's going on or their level of popularity. But if non-ARMY are thinking something shady happened for them to get this honor then that in and of itself says something probably shady happened for them to get this honor. Why couldn't BTS take the last stage of K-pop awards show even after rewriting K-pop? No, the worldwide pop's history. Were they being discriminated against other major idol groups in Korea? Let's find out what stupid things happened in the past days of K-pop. And how did BTS overcome all of them? Many K-pop fans said that's because BTS's agency, Big Hit, was a weak, small company. In contrast, EXO is a singer from SM Entertainment, the giant in the K-pop industry. People argued EXO beated BTS with SM's power on their back. As you know, there are three major entertainment agencies in Korea, SM, JYP, and YG. They were like the kings of the Korean entertainment industry. Korean society has its own peculiarities that are pretty different from foreign countries. As people tend to value education or background over a person's ability, the environment in which they belong is so crucial to their success. Sadly, if someone makes his debut as an idol in Korea, he is divided into invisible classes depending on which agency he belongs to. 
broadcast PDs apparently give more attention and opportunities to the new singers from those three major entertainment agencies. I, I get it. I get that. The thought process is they came from these bigger, more established agencies, so they have to be great because they had better teachers. They had to beat out a larger pool of competition, so on and so forth. I, I understand. I get that these big agencies have already established fan bases, and therefore when they release a new group, their previous rapport with the community and the public of they've already released a lot of great groups. Let me check out this new group. They're probably great as well. It's kind of like when Marvel releases another Marvel movie with a brand new character. People are a lot more open to it because they've already experienced, you know, the success of Iron Man and Thor. So I get it in theory. The question then becomes, how is anyone supposed to climb this social ladder? I know that you're not supposed to climb the social ladder and it's a very Western thought process to want to climb the social ladder because that's kind of our thing, the whole rags to riches, American dream story, whatever. But the assumption that genius and talent can only come from already established companies then falls into the trap of, okay, well, at one point, these companies weren't established and weren't the big dogs. There were other companies that were before them and there were other artists that were before them and so on and so forth. And those groups that you now respect were once new, they were once unestablished, they were once inexperienced. And so it, it's kind of like this tricky thought process of, yes, these people have proven that they can produce quality. However, at one point before they had proven that, they were also in the, the category that you would now look down on a new agency or group or whatever. In. I'm not here to you know take shots at Korean society or Koreans way of life I understand that they have a very different approach than we do here in the West and I can appreciate and respect that but in this particular instance I think that you can fall into the trap of gatekeeping the next great thing hint hint BTS because it doesn't come from where you expected it to come from and so instead of being a meritocracy which is everything being ranked based off just solely how good it is how quality that thing is you fall into a system like a caste kind of system and that inevitably breeds exclusion of potentially great ideas art people so on and so forth Let's take a look at Blackpink's case. YG's Blackpink received special treatment from their debut as superstars. When Blackpink received numerous love calls from the broadcasts as soon as they debuted, the public criticized that it was because of YG's power and that Blackpink has a gold spoon. I'm not saying they did something wrong. Of course they had a hard time and they had to go through constant survival until just before their debut. It's also their effort to survive at YG in competition with tens of thousands of trainees. However, it's true that after their debut, the power of their agency made them more comfortable and stable compared to other idols. BTS had to do whatever it came to because the company was short of money. They had to work as backup dancers for models even after winning the first place in the music show. Models were walking down the runway and BTS danced to the song I Need You behind the stage. The idol group members who had the first place in music show worked as a backup dancers and TV program. It was when Big Hit Entertainment was only relying on BTS's income, so the members had to work hard whatever was given. If they were the singers from the three major companies, this could not happen for sure. Among the three major agencies, SM's power is more than you can imagine. SM celebrities are occupying the broadcasting industry. Broadcasters put SM singers on the stage because they are afraid. How can a single entertainment company be that influential? You may not be able to understand, but the fact that SM dominates the Korean broadcast industry can be easily seen in the Dongbang Shinji's case. So for those who don't know, this actually happens in the US as well. In fact, it's on an even bigger scale because the companies are just bigger, but there is a big three, like a literal big three of entertainment companies. They're not even just record labels at this point, but entertainment companies in the US. We have 
Universal, Sony, and Warner. I'm sure you've heard of all of those companies before. And there used to be a big four until 2012, 2012 when EMI was bought out by Universal. Universal is now the SM of the United States, really, of the West as a whole. And Universal is the biggest record label. And really, these record labels are so massive that they own other big record labels. So 99.9% .9 of Western artists that you've heard come out in the past 50 years either came out on one of these three labels or one of their subsidiary labels and they control the industry they control the radio stations they control the music blogs they control like certain parts of social media like certain things on youtube are pushed harder than other things certain streaming platforms get certain artists put yeah it's it's a whole thing and really it comes down to money so i'm i'm in no way surprised or even skeptical that this is happening because all of these different parts of the industry are either literally directly owned by these record labels and when you own a music blog or when you own a streaming service or when you own a radio station of course you're going to push your stuff the most because that's it's business capitalism that's how you make money by advertising your product in this case your artist but in the cases where they don't directly own them a lot of times it's just payment. You know, it's a pay to play thing. I, as ARMY, you guys know all about this in the West. And part of the reason why BTS hasn't, in the majority of their history, gotten the radio play that they deserved based on the number of albums that they were selling and the number of fans that they had, it comes down to how much are you willing to pay me to play this song? Because this other person is willing to pay me X amount of dollars. And if you're not willing to pay at all or you're not willing to pay as much, Obviously, I'm going to do what's better for my business, which is take this money to play this song. And the bigger record labels, because they have so many successful and profitable artists and so many different business ventures in the entertainment industry, they have the money to shell out on those things. And also, they want to shell that money out because it brings back in profit. That's how you guys find out about new artists and be like, oh, I've never heard of this person before, but they have 2 million followers on Instagram. Sometimes it's just because you're living on a rock, but sometimes it's because the record label is paying this advertising agency to push social media followers to them or their bots. or the, there's, there's a bunch of stuff that goes on behind the curtain in the music industry and in the entertainment industry, and this all comes down to green. It all comes down to money. I don't know if Korean money is green. I don't even... Are they called wands? I don't know what they're called, and I don't know what color they are, but whatever color they are, it comes down to that color. This is a clear example of how if you incur SM's hatred, you'll be buried in the entertainment industry. Dongbangshinggi was a five-member idol group that became Asia's number one boy band in a short period of time, as planned by SM CEO Lee Suman. SM asked them to work more and more, but paid little. The angry three members sued SM for unfair contracts and left the company. What happened after that? The three members were just disappeared from TV and broadcasts because of SM's pressure towards the PDs. SM pressed the broadcast to make sure that the three people who betrayed the company could not work normally in the entertainment industry. They also threatened the broadcasts who let JYJ appear on the TV program by saying SM artists will boycott that company. That's why we can't see three members of Dongbangshinggi on TV. At this time, Koreans experienced the power of SM for the first time. People were surprised that the three superstars could not be on the air for years. SM's words... That's... I find it funny that it's considered betrayal because I'm sure it didn't start with hey let's sue them. I'm sure there was some some talks that happened first, but to forcefully demand that you are paid what you are worth and that you are valued and not treated like slave labor or indentured servitude and that is considered betrayal and not the fact that, you know, SM or insert any record label that you want to talk about. This happens across all major record labels, but that the shady conglomerate wasn't paying their prized assets in the way that they deserve to be paid. That's not betrayal at all. This can change the whole stance of the broadcast. In front of this huge SM power, BTS had to be smaller. 
Big Hit Entertainment was a small company and wasn't even projecting an idol group from the first. BTS had to go through everything by themselves. Big Hit had no strong fellow singers or seniors BTS could lean on. SM's Red Velvet made a splendid debut, promoted by senior singers such as Super Junior and FX. YG's Jenny was able to make her name known by featuring a song by Big Bang G-Dragon even before her debut. The trainee audition programs like WIN... Are they dating? G-Dragon, and is that a rumor that someone told me that's not actually true? I read your guys' comments, and so I just... I, I have to take everything at face value until someone corrects me. So if they aren't dating, then let me know in the comment section down below and don't like cut my head off while you do it because I, I don't know. I'm literally asking a question I don't know. But yeah, that also happens in the West. If you notice, we'll use hip hop because hip hop is the most popular genre on earth at the moment. But the big three of hip hop, most popular and commercially successful rappers in 2010's decade were... As you know, Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole, and all three of them had cosigns from already established monsters in the industry. In Drake's case, he had Lil Wayne. In Kendrick's case, he had Dr. Dre. And in J. Cole's case, he had Jay-Z. Obviously, they're all uber talented, but they were exposed to us, the general public, by already established names. Being a part of a bigger, major label and being signed to powerful people allows you to do that. We as the public would not know who Kanye West was if it wasn't for Jay-Z. And we wouldn't have known who Jay-Z was if it wasn't for Biggie and so on and so forth. And you can even go back in the other direction. We wouldn't have known who Travis Scott was if it wasn't for Kanye West. But you get my point. Having the cosign of an already established big powerful artist has started tons of, like so many careers have been started by a feature or a retweet, or a dual project, or just a photo. Like, the, it, the ability to have someone that the music public respects say, hey, this person is next up, is literally priceless. Mix and Match and 16 from YG and JYP were very popular too. In the tough entertainment world, the only thing BTS can trust was producer Pang Xiaok each other. They were powerless and had to bear the public criticism that they were a group that would disappear in a few years. At that time, BTS was attacked by malicious comments that were close to personal attacks. They also had to put up with insults from their fellow singers. Icon's Bobby appeared on a hip-hop program. Yep, I, I saw the Be Free video. If you haven't seen my reaction to the whole Be Free thing, I have a whole video on it. Where I'm just basically spending the entire video roasting Be Free. Yeah, from the gate, they were getting attacked, which is just, just ridiculous. And Show Me The Money 3 and dissed RM as a bad idol rapper. He wrote satirical lyrics by using the name of Pangtan and Rap Monster, saying RM should improve his rap skill more. After the success of BTS at a press conference of YG, the reporter asked Bobby, why he had blamed RM at that time. He gave the microphone to CEO Yang yeon without giving any answer. Yang yeon replied instead of Bobby, it's common for rappers to diss each other, and Bobby would have done it with the intention of doing well with the same idol rappers. But Bobby never mentioned about the big agency idol rappers from SM and JYP. Fans said Bobby attacked only the rappers from small and medium-sized companies, such as RM, Ravi, and Boyfriend. Armies blamed Bobby's attitude for not apologizing yet. This was not the only neglect of- For the record, that's that's cowardly. I don't care, I, I don't care. Kicking the small guy, it's, that doesn't make you tough. That makes you a bully. You're not cool, you're not swag, and none of you know more about hip hop industry and the ethos of hip hop than I do, and no one, no one is going to give you props on beating on the small guy. You're not cool at all when it's between some super established monster versus some indie rapper from the underground. Like, it's not, that's not cool. That's not beef at all. Nobody cares. Nobody thinks you're tough. Nobody wants to hear that. It's not, no. But, but we see that you couldn't answer 
that you had to pass to your puppet master, I mean your boss, your record label exec, so he could give the PC answer. But yeah, no respect, no street cred, no nothing. That's corny, and that's lame, and that's pathetic. Fellow singers, rapper B Free is also famous for criticizing Suga and RM. He appeared in a radio live in 2013 with RM, Suga, and several other rappers. He said RM and Suga could have succeeded as rappers, but they made their debut as idols, unable to resist the temptation to make money. I'm sorry. What does idol mean? Why are you guys on the stage with makeups like women? Okay, so this is another common misconception in the indie music industry and in the underground music industry and I actually hate it which is you're not a real musician if you care about money in any capacity now I don't believe that RM and Suga decided to become idols because of money but even if they did so what they have bills to pay and just because they decide to go about paying those bills in a different way or paying those bills using their talent in a way that will propel them further than the way that you're choosing to do it does not make you better than them. One could argue it just makes you dumb because you're not doing, you're doing things the hard way instead of the smart way. But I digress. The point is, as someone who plans to be an independent musician and who plans to make a metric fuck ton of money, I think that the thought process is not only flawed, it's just stupid. It's not cool to struggle. Nobody wants to be homeless or, you know, having to busk, which is like, you know, playing music out in public for change, basically, to be able to pay their bills. And I don't know about RM's history as much, but I know that Sugar came from poverty and there was points where he literally couldn't eat I respect him for getting his money, for getting the bag. I don't blame him. Poverty is not cool. It's not fun. It's not sweet. It's not something to aspire to. And the people who think that way usually have never been broke. They don't understand the plights of poverty anyway. They're not in a situation where it's a make it or break it for them. So for them to judge other people's situations and other people's decisions with their career is really dumb. I don't plan on signing with a major record label, but that doesn't mean that I think I'm better than the people who did. I know signed major record label artists who signed because if they didn't, they would lose their house. Their family would not be able to eat. They had to take that advance money to continue to survive. So for you to speak from a place of ignorance, because it is a place of ignorance because you did not walk 10,000 miles in their shoes. You don't know what's going on in their life, in their financial situation. You don't know their dreams, their goals, their aspirations, anything for you to come out and attack them completely unprompted, arguably for clout in the first place, because you're doing it because you're trying to get some cool points with all the other idiots who think that your thought process is the correct thought process, you're no better than them. They're seeking in, in your mind, because again, I don't think they actually signed for money, but they're seeking monetary gain. You're just seeking social gain. You're just, you can't eat other people thinking that you're cool and you're hard and you're street and you're real. That's not going to pay your bills. So when your lights get cut off, but people think you're cool, are you going to go stay with them? That doesn't make any sense at all. So, um, I hear that thought process so much in the indie circuits of people acting like you're not an artist, you're not a real musician unless you make no money, <laughs> unless like you're you're broke and struggling and you're like having to do everything you can to scrape by and have no semblance of monetary success in life. But that's dumb because all of the musicians that those people look up to also made money and also in many cases signed, which is how they know of them in the first place. And then the musicians that they looked up to and the musicians that they looked up to and so on and so forth, all the way back to artists in the Renaissance period being sponsored by patrons like that. You got to eat and you can't eat being a real artist. So, um, yeah, anyway, I'm starting to sweat. Dude, I'm hot. Like, I, I really, I really hate when people... When people do that, it just, 
Ugh, okay. The fans went furious and demanded him an apology, but he excused it's his way in the spirit of hip hop and posted pictures of BTS fans who blamed him. Big Hit's Pang Xiaok didn't put up with it and posted on Twitter. I know speaking whatever in your heart is hip hop's basic attitude, but isn't it necessary to keep time and place regardless of genre? Wouldn't it be better not to appear on the radio if he couldn't stand what he had to say? After that day, Pang Xiaok bought delicious food for RM and Suga and spoke warm words and advices. They were only in the age of 20 and 21, how much hardships and mockeries they had to endure. Back then, no one thought BTS would become a world-class singer, but they made a miracle. Without support from the big agency, the result was created by competing only through unity and music. BTS's achievements are something that even the top three agency idols have failed to achieve. It's ironic that they're treated better in other countries than in their own country, but they don't have to care about the reactions of some malicious Korean fans and agencies anymore. They took their best revenge on those who ignored them by looking at their origins and backgrounds. Thanks to BTS, a new history of K-pop has started. Hopefully, the K-pop celebrities and artists will be recognized for their abilities, not their backgrounds. As BTS did, I hope a lot of unknown singers from small agencies create more miracles. Okay, so I'm going to keep this outro pretty short and sweet because most of you aren't going to be here for the outro anyway based on analytics. So, thank you for all of you who are here and who do stay to the end and thank you guys for watching the video. I knew about some of those things like the Be Free situation and the fact that like the bigger record labels tend to boycott things when they don't get their way. I also knew that BTS didn't have help from Korean society as a whole because they didn't come from one of the bigger record labels but it was interesting to see like the origin of the SM boycotting things uh, I didn't know about the other rapper who was punching down, trying to attack rappers from smaller labels and just like some other things that were in there. It was just a very interesting video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you learned some stuff, that's great. If you didn't and you're just watching this because you want to see me learn some stuff, well, I did, so thank you. I appreciate all of you guys. Like I said, the Patreon video is gonna go up on Monday and we'll be back here again on Wednesday for our next YouTube video. Definitely make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see all of you guys here on the channel again. Have a great day.